Hey Hunter, how are you doing today? Let's go fishing. Yeah, I'm ready to do some fishing today. The circus is here, the circus We're gonna is do here. some camping too. Pulling into the campground here, got the polar crib, so I'm excited about doing a little bit of camping. That is kind of the cool part about buying a polar crib is that you know it's not just for ice fishing. You can use it all summer long, and it's kind of it's got definitely some dual purpose. This is our ice fishing rig here, and typically we just use it for ice fishing, but you know what? This thing is a year-round vehicle, and I'll tell you, you guys have seen the inside of it before. It's awesome in here. But you know what, we're coming up to do some walleye fishing on the Great Lakes here and where I thought to myself, you know what, why should we rent a motel? It's got AC in it, we've got power, we've got stove, we've got everything here, we've got three great places to sleep. So we're going to be doing some camping out of the polar crib. We've got an exciting two days of fishing coming up. We're going to back our camper in here and uh, get her all hooked up. So everybody, guess what, hold on to your hiney. It's our good friend Lance Peterson from Polar Crib. And not only that, but Hunter's here. What's up, buddy? Yeah, you've never met Phil the Blind Guy. Oh, there, I hear him. <laughs> the storms are past us. We're going to be uh, jumping on the water here in the next 10, 15 minutes. And we're going to start the day off actually doing some casting with uh, some crankbaits and uh, lots of jigs. We're going to be using slow pokes along with some plastics. You know what? Like we always say, hold on to your heinies. Why is Warrior Hey everybody, welcome to our show this week. I'll tell you what, we're always having fun and we are looking for a great show this week. And you know what? We're out on some big water and we're gonna be fishing walleyes and we wanna teach you guys several ways to catch lots of walleyes and how to break down a big body of water. And we're not gonna just do one technique, we're gonna do several techniques. For guys like me that I'm not a big troller but we are gonna do some trolling here today. But I like hands-on fishing, either cast in plastics, cast in a jig and a crawler, cast in any type of hard baits. You know what, the key is first is to locate them fish. And the next thing obviously is to try to catch them. So I think we've got a great day, we've got uh, a storm that just came through here so the fish might be a little slow at first but I think it's going to pick up as the day progresses so you know what you guys hang on to your hiney nice walleye Lance but can you get them in the boat because we don't carry a net there you go nice job why don't you tell everybody what you're doing Lance you got uh I got oh. my favorite rip and wrap it's gone. <laughs> it's... <laughs> that looks a little dangerous. And basically what we're doing is we're working the windward side of this hump right here. And we just came around it. And I told them guys to get ready because it's either going to be the first or second cast. But that's the crucial part, you know, always work the windward side. See that's not saying how you want to just do it. Hang on, Phil, I'll get you on snake as soon as I catch this fish. Oh yeah, it feels like a decent fish. Back by oh yeah, there's a nice wall, you guys. Careful, Look at that. Nice fish right there. Scoop them up here. Lance, you can... Look at that. That's a nice fish right there. 18 inch range. You know, again, the key is just trying to find these humps and stay on the windward side of them. Gotta love that right there, huh? He's out of here. As yep. winter storms turned them off. And yep, no way. Off. As soon as that wind starts blowing, I'll tell you, it's game oh, on. Yeah, what do you got this time? I don't know, but I can't. I think it might be a big old sheep set, but let's see what you got. Oh, look at that. That's a nice walleye. Look at that, everybody. That's a walleye. That's that a is a very nice fish. You know what? He's going to break 
break down using the I'm going to grab the nut for you, Phil. I'm up here a minute ago. All right. I don't like so, it. Oh. Nice fish right there. Wow. Right, I tell you, the key is to you guys is that weather really is a, a big factor in it, and that is definitely a nice fish right there. Look at the size of that one. Oh. It didn't even fib to me. It's not a sheep. No, it's a walleye for sure. And what we're doing is, this is really, you know, little things I always say make a big difference when it comes to fishing. And uh, what I've got, we're using the slow poke jig by bait rigs. And the key to this jig is, you guys, is the angle of the way it falls. And you look at the way the lead is on the bottom there, that jig will stand upright every time. And it's got an extra long hook on there, which is awesome for plastics. Let's let this big girl go here. Man, that, that is a nice fish. Gone. What do you got going there, buddy? Now you're doing something totally different than what we're doing. And I'm trying to, and I've had my back to you for the last 15 minutes, so tell me what you are doing. I'm rigging. You're rigging, uh, the old Minnesota guy. What do you got? Oh, and it is a walleye. So tell everybody what you're doing, Lance. Uh, just a weight and a nice gold spinner. Not too bad, that's a good fish. The old bait rigs rig, I like to see that. Nice job, boy, you just put that down there, what, yeah. the last five, six minutes? Nice job. Don't be, why are you so quiet? I'm just tired. <laughs> tired? So Lance drove last night, everybody, all night to make it over here today to fish with us. And again, hey Lance, we're kind of out here. Let's tell everybody about one of your friends that kind of passed away. We kind of want to dedicate this show to. Well, a friend of mine um, that I was on a fire department for for many years. Yep actually passed away on us the other day and um, his funeral is today and I couldn't be there with him and I wanted to but um, you know it's part of life it's the way it goes great guy we all learned a lot from each other you know when you're a fireman you're that brotherhood will never will never stop you know right just something that we uh, we learn to live with everything. It certainly is. We're very fortunate that uh, we we're able to come out here and enjoy the things we do. So that one's for you, Steve. There you go. All right. Nice fish. Nice job. Lance, you going to net him for him? Oh, Phil, you're on fire, man. I don't know what you're doing, but keep it up. Oh, I just missed one. I'm not smoking any cigars. I guess if this is a walleye, it's a big one. <laughs> he is just staying down. Is it a walleye? You know, feels sheepy. Oh, it's a nice fish, real nice. Oh, there we go. We've got a double. Get him. Nope. Get him. No. Oh, I'm, I'm wondering what's going on. I thought. Boy, that guy. That I don't know about the Minnesota guys when it comes to nutting fish, but <laughs> hey, uh, you want to nut mine right away? Get yeah. this time. <laughs> well, these fish are powerful. I'll tell you that. Nice job. Are you doing a double header? Double header. All right. Look how beautiful these fish are here too. You know. And again, you know, we're going to be doing some trolling yet here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to be doing some trolling. And that's that's always fun, too. But I'm more of a, a jig fisherman, and I'll take that any day of the week like that. Lots of nice fish. Nice Tell fish you. there. Nice fish. Even for you to catch them. Basically, what we're doing here is we're just using the wind, and we're drifting down the edge of this rock pile here. And uh, basically, I'm just popping that jig. I'm using a Super Braid Power Strike line on here. And uh, I've used kind of a, a stiffer rod so I can get the most action out of that bait too. Give it a good pop. And the fisher, I'm always following that bait, bait down because they're always hitting it on the drop. So when I'm going back down, I'm controlling it and I can usually feel the pop. Otherwise, what I can do is I can pick up the line to see that line jump too when it gets super windy. You know, again, just giving that a slight little pop. And I'll tell you the difference of when I usually like to go with plastics versus going with a hard bait like a, a shiver minnow is when I'm up on these shallows like that, I'll take plastics any day of the week. They're easier to control in that shallow water. But when I'm out deeper, then I want a he that's a big fish. Then I want a heavier, ooh. Then I want a heavier bait that I can control. Ooh, that is, boy, it's amazing how these fish fight. Nice fish. <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh, it's a nice fish, probably 22, 23 inches. 
absolutely smashed that. And that's what I'm saying. Look at that shank, that longer shank. Look how far back into the into the mouth that that fish has got that in. You know, definitely the key to any kind of fishing is you definitely got to look for the bait fish too. And you can see these big clouds of bait in here. You can understand why these fish are so thick in here. There's walleyes right here. That's a pot of bait, more walleyes. Little different definition when you look at like a, these are Lawrence units, a little bit more of an arc versus like when you're looking at a hummingbird or a Garmin. They're all good units, just mark them a little bit differently. I'm out about 13 foot, just pop this one. And I slowed my presentation down. I was actually, that's a good fish. Boy, that thing just absolutely crushed that too. It's gonna lift them right up, I love that. Ooh. Again, when you look at that slowpoke jig, look how far back that placement is. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but look at that, that, that hook, the shank of that hook is actually back in the cheek of that, that walleye right there. Back after an awesome day of fishing, time for a little campfire. We've got our good friend Brian Claremont here and his buddy Jody, which is our friend too, of course. We're going to do a little cooking, get the Leroy meats going here on the green egg, clean some fish, and uh, get ready for tomorrow. A good friend, Brian Claremont. Hey everybody, guess what? Yes, you're correct. It is my favorite time of the night and is our Leroy lunch time. And uh, I've got some marinated ribeyes and we've also got the mushroom and Swiss brats. We're gonna put them on the green egg here and hopefully in about 15 minutes, Get ready to do some serious chowing down. There, you got something I can wipe my hands off with, buddy? Hang on a second, Lance. I've got more than something. Here we go. Lance, if you've never tried them, you definitely want to try them. It is our tub of towel moment of the night. And I'll tell you something, Lance. You want to throw them fish carcasses in here? Yep. Had an awesome day out on the lake today. Now, here's a great way to wipe everything off. Awesome. It's gonna look great and smell hey, they great. They smell nice. They certainly do, and they do the job. Look at this. There. Wow. My philosophy is clean. keep things clean. You know what? It looks like the ribeyes are done. I like mine a little medium rear. See what they look like. Brats need a little bit more time, but that steak, look at that. Oh, that's like absolutely perfectly done. Like a knife that cuts you the wound here. But the scar, the scar remains. No more end it. All right. Awesome. Voila. Any requests here, folks? It's time to go fishing. That's the time it is. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our show today. I'll tell you what. I am absolutely pumped up. Had a great night sleeping in the polar crib last night. We're gonna be heading back out on the bait. We're only gonna do a little bit of jigging today because we did so good yesterday. We're gonna go out and try to troll and catch some big fish and show you guys several techniques on trolling out here on big water. So, hey, you know, like I always say, hold on to your hiney. Welcome back, you guys. I'll tell you what, it's day number two out here. What we're gonna start off here is we're gonna start off pulling crawler harnesses uh, and spinners, spinners and crawler harnesses, and then uh, we're gonna switch over a little bit later to some crankbaits. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is we're working about 24 to 26 feet of water. Most of the fish that we're marking on 
The Lawrence units today we're seeing are about two to four feet off a of bottom. Uh, I've got one out pretty high. Um, I've got it down about 10 feet. Everything else I'm gonna run just above where we're marking the fish and uh, start switching colors. Typically what I'll do is when the sun is out like this, I'll go with more silver blades. So any kind of coloration with silver, a lot of purples out here seem to work good. Some oranges and yellows will mix in there. Um, but we're gonna be trolling about 1.2 to 1.4 miles an hour. And uh, let's see what happens. Again, we're looking for that big, big fish. Man, I'm jacked up, I'll tell you what. I got a great night's sleep in the polar crib last night and ready to rock and roll. Lance, what do you got going there? I got a fish on the five footer. Let's see what you got. We're going to be going in circles. Circles are not good. Oh, yeah, it's a nice fish. It's a nice wallet. Got him on the old spinning rod. Oh, good job, Lance. Oh, nice. Got him on the short rod. Pulled that fish up. Oh, that's a fat one, too. Gotta love that. All right, game on. Hey, I'll tell you what the key is when I'm pulling out here crawlers. I want the biggest, fattest, juiciest crawlers I can get. And I'm gonna thread these crawlers on here. So I got a big one, big old crawler here, and I'm gonna pinch just a little bit of them off right there. So then I'm gonna take my worm threader, you guys, and this to me is a definitely a, a, a crucial tool out here because I like to hide that hook and get that placement way back there. And it's a lot easier threading that crawler when you got a big, fat, juicy one like this one. Okay, and I'll take it right out to the very tip. It's, that's hollow inside there. Okay, I'm gonna take my crawler harness and I'm gonna stick that hook right inside there like this. Now I keep the tension on the line, you guys see that? and gals, guys and gals. And then just start slowly threading that crawler right up that line. You know, it takes a few extra minutes to do this, but to me, it's well worth it. You don't miss nearly the fish you would miss if that hook was on the outside too. And watch, okay, now I'm gonna push it all the way up. Now I'm gonna keep this, this hook right here, the back hook. And I always, when I tie up a crawler harness, I, I usually run just a two hook harness and I always make the back hook back just a little bit farther than I normally would just so that crawler can stretch out. So you see how that hook is really hidden in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the main hook here, the front hook, and I'm just gonna turn it, twist it, give it a little bit of a twist, and there we go, ready to rock and roll. We'll show you what it looks like in the water too. It's pretty unique. Hey, I'll tell you what, here we go, Phyllis. You're up, my man. Let me uh, slide through on you here a little bit. Let's see what we got here, yeah. Oh, it's a decent fish. Let me grab the net. That is a good one. Got him? Nice. Awesome. Nice Yay! fish. There is some nice fish in here, I'll tell you that. Gotta love that. You know, it took a little bit today to get these fish to go, and I think a lot of it you guys had to do with that storm that we had last night, for sure. Look how fat that fish is. That's definitely a nice fish. Ooh! ooh. <laughs> That's definitely a nice fish. Can I throw my fish back? <laughs> he is gonna go back. I, but... I, I, I caught it and you caught it twice. Right. <laughs> Gotta work. like that. This week's tip of the week brought to you by Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. You know, when it's about 100 degrees out here in the middle you of the You look lake. like you've been sweating a little bit, my it's friend. It's a little warm. Warm. The boys are a little warm. <laughs> and uh, I just launched the drone over there. The tip this week is to fly the drone directly over the boat. Now nice watch breeze. this. It's definitely going to cool it down about 10 to 15 degrees. Unfortunately, we're fishing with Lance Peterson today, and he does not have a Delco Bimini top. Hopefully, we can take care of that. But to improvise right now, Oh, does that make a difference? Ah. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Look at his shirt.
Everybody, what we got going here now is we actually made another pass through here and we switched over to uh, the T-Bone series shads and uh, just got them out there and Lance has got one on. You know, the problem is we we're pulling harnesses through here and half the fish we were catching were sheep said. So hopefully this is gonna take care of that. Thinking you think. Th oh, there's a bit in the big walleye. Gotta like that. Okay, so the cranks, the cranks definitely did work. It, so far it's kept the sheep pet off of us. Ooh, nice fish. Very nice fish. Loving that. Lance Ola on the old T-bone yeah. shads. Gotta like that. You know what I did with that too, is I did run that back a little bit farther. Um, I was seeing most of the fish right now we're in about 13 to 14 feet. I was seeing most of them about four feet off the bottom. So I ran that back. I got the outsides down about six foot and I just moved that one and put it down at about 10 foot. Gotta like that. That's Hold them nice, up to the camera. Nice fish. There you go. Nice fish. This is how I cool off out here. I don't get to do this very often. Hey Lance, let us know if you see any fish down there. <laughs> Operations, fun. Lance Peterson yeah, back in the boat. Okay, there we go. I got one! I got one, folks! <laughs> He's not a keeper, kick it back. Yeah, love it. <laughs> what a you know what? Fish. Never stop having fun, that's all I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> stop, you drop. Wow, what another great experience we had this week, everybody. I hope you feel the same way. You know, we caught a lot of fish the last day and a half, but we never did really get a big fish. We had a couple that hooked up that might have had the potential, but we certainly spent a lot of time and fished hard and built some great memories. You know, Lance, you truly are a good singer, I'll tell you that. You know, that was that was nice last night, the whole camping, don't you think yep. that, Phil? Oh, hey, you know, like we always love to do, we want to thank all the hard work and Americans in this country that keep things moving and make our lives a lot easier. And of course, we want to thank everybody for watching our show. And just like we always say, it truly, truly do mean it. It certainly is a great day to be alive. Oh, that is a nice ah, walk. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. I didn't get you, did I? I hope you're not using that water. Yeah, let's run it. Can't get enough outdoors? Go to LarrySmithOutdoors.com. Follow us on social media for all the latest in fishing reports, tips and techniques, recipes, and other exclusive web-only content. Subscribe to Larry Smith Outdoors on YouTube and hit the notifications button to catch all our weekly videos. Because if you ain't the first to know, you're the last.